Cornell University did the largest, most comprehensive scientific study ever conducted on what happens when people eat meat, dairy, and animal products. Is it really good or bad for us? Are we lacking key nutrients if we don't eat meat? Do we need meat for protein? Do people with certain blood types need to eat meat? If you or someone you know has cancer, heart disease, or diabetes, you need to know about the China study. Meet the man who conducted this groundbreaking study right now on MarcusNews.com. If you're into health and healing and getting yourself into a, a better state of health and living a long, healthy life, you've got to watch this video. And I have the honor of interviewing Dr. T. Colin Campbell, who's with me today. Yes, you all know who he is, who is going to explain to you who don't know about this, the effects of eating animal products on the human body. Cornell University, and this is a real study, studied 120 villages, was it? In 130 China? villages. 130 villages in China, which incorporated over, what, six and a half thousand people and the effects that eating animals has on their body. So, I mean, everybody thinks you have to have meat for protein. Well, you don't. We don't. We know that. That's true, what you just said. You know, people are fascinated with protein probably more than any other single nutrient. Way, all the way back to the time when it was first discovered in 1839. Protein was the thing. You know, that, that's our life. We have to have as uh, much as we can get, more or less. People assumed it was always from animals. That's not true. We get all the protein we need from plants. Right. Where do gorillas get their... Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the biggest, protein. strongest animals... Right. Um, the you know, the uh, Elephants. Elephants and giraffes. I mean, yeah, they, they make yeah. all the protein they need. Exactly. From eating plants. Exactly. What happens when people eat animal products, meat? The book itself, the China study, has got sort of two stories in here. One story was all the laboratory research we had been doing for years you know, experimentally, especially on diet and cancer, especially on the effect of protein on cancer growth. So I, I was really into the weeds, you know, into the details of how that works. Uh, we got some ideas. Protein promotes cancer. We could turn pro cancer on by giving more protein. And that, by the way, was dairy protein. Right, animal protein. Animal protein. Not so not I'm, I'm from a farm, and that was a, that was a pill to take a little while to adjust <laughs> right, to. Right. Uh, so we did that for some years with lots of students and other colleagues. And, and then finally the opportunity came along for me. Let's go to China. A, a total of 100, living in a total of 130 villages. You know, 6,500 adults plus their family. And we just collected a massive amount of information. We looked at blood samples and urine samples and food samples. And, and the reason we went to China to do that is because cancer was so common in certain areas of the country and not in others. Mm -hmm. So we had a chance to compare. And so, you know, it's, it's not simple. It, we, we, it was complex. And so we were uh, then having a look at which kind of nutrient characteristics were associated with getting more disease. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the good old diet we he eat here in the West, you know, more animal food, which right. meant more protein, more fat. Right. It meant also meant less plants. Plants have an antioxidants. That's a big part of the story. Right. So when we consume, in, in a nutshell, when we start consuming more animal foods in our diet, getting more protein, because we think it's so valuable, we get more protein, we get more fat, we get less fiber, we get less all the vitamins, we get less. The, the combination of everything working together is amazing. I mean, the three biggest things, the, the causes of death in, this, in the modern world are heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, all of which can be traced to animal products. And people don't know that there's a connection between diabetes and animal cancer, products. Heart, yeah, they, 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 they think it's just bread and sugar. <laughs> That's right. You know, if people switch to a whole food, plant-based diet, it's the bottom line. If they switch to that, even the chronic pain that 20% of our population tend to have on a regular basis, that tends to go away in a lot of cases, at least 70 to 80% of it, right? That's important. People think it's just meat. It's dairy uh, is a big part right. of it. It is. Dairy, eggs, meat, that sort of thing. So when we gave animal protein, cancer started to grow. We take it away, it cuts it off. You give it back again, it cuts it on. In other words, that was one of the early uh, I guess you could call it discoveries that we made way back in the 1970s. And this is actual scientific testing that Yes, of course, is. of course. When you start eating animal protein, it, it does all kinds of things inside of the cell and inside of the body to start causing these disease to form. And all sorts of other things, all kinds of illnesses. And so in the moment you pull that out, eat more plants, make it 100% if possible, 
Mm -hmm. Don't add a lot of uh, salt and sugar and fat to that, of course. If you do it that way, we can see results in 10 days. Wow. 15 days, 20 days. It's really, truly amazing. And my, my good friend at Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Caldwell Esselton, another friend, Dr. Dean, Dean Ornish, they had been doing some of this kind of thing from a little different perspective. They're both doctors, and they, they basically work on heart disease. They right. could cure heart disease. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, yeah. so you yeah. look at it. I know, I know. But it, there are people who are going to say, um, well, I have a, a grandfather or an uncle that's 97 years old and he's eaten meat all his life. What do you well, say yeah, what I say to it, you know, there's some people, about 5% of the people, more or less, can smoke all their lives. Right, yeah. Never get lung cancer. Yeah. So is that the proof of the pudding? No. I mean, uh, what about the other 95%? Exactly. And, and I, I, I always crazy. say it's not just what you eat. It's like, do you have stress? Are, are you exercising? I mean, health is a whole package deal. Yes, it's right, not yeah. just that. And yeah, eating a little bit is, in a, if you have a little bit of bad stuff, but a lot of good stuff, it kind of, you know. That's right. But most people in the modern world, all they eat is just bad stuff. And so it, it, right. it comes up pretty cool. So dairy is obviously just as bad as the meat, which includes, ladies, yogurt, right? That's right. Yeah, and, and what people don't understand is yogurt is, is just fat and sugar, and they say well, it has probiotics in it. You know, science is kind of complicated, as you might imagine. Uh, some of this stuff, the, the so-called probiotics, you know, take it alone, you look at them, it looks pretty good, you know, some of them. Right. And so in the short run, you can actually see some benefits if right. you're doing that kind of thing. Right. But, but the point is that, uh, what, what that says to me, uh, oftentimes, because it might be microorganisms in our gastrointestinal tract, in our colon, for example. Right. You take them out, and oh, they can do some good things. Oh, this looks really neat. But to turn, take it out and put it in a pill and do it that way is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because if you eat the right food, what happens? All those organisms in our intestine, they, they shift gears. Yeah. They become the right kind of exactly, organisms. That's exactly. what happens. Right, right. And, and what I've now become acquainted with or know several world-class athletes in different sports. Mm -hmm. They have switched you know, over to a plant-based diet. And they actually improve their performance. Right, exactly. From wrestlers to weightlifters to baseball players, to basketball, football, yeah. you na name it. But you can get your protein from plant sources. Of course, legumes, obviously a great source of protein, uh, whole grains you know, and, and leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's all. Even, even the plants that have the least protein is really enough. I'm thinking of potatoes. And I hear that a lot from the meat people. Well, plants have incomplete proteins. They're missing three of the essential that's, amino acids or something. That's, that's fake news. Really? Yeah, it's fake news. Uh, it's true that, you know, uh, when you consume a plant protein, there's one or two amino acids, a little lower than, it's just not as efficient, let's say it's animal protein. And, and, but there's a reason for that. It, it, it slows down our growth a little bit. That used to be considered bad. It's good. It makes you live longer. It lives you live longer and you don't get the disease, subsequent right. diseases. So the so-called incomplete proteins pay no attention to it. Good. They're superior. Because anything that makes you accelerate something, growth, like, you know, right. people who want to get big muscles fast, there's a price you pay. And grows cancer fast. Yeah, and they all get they all get heart attacks and cancer. That's right. and, there's and, two sides and, of that coin. Yeah, yeah, they lose their hair, get prostate cancer, <laughs> right? It's just, the big trend now is bone broth. It sounds kind of disgusting. If you eat whole food, plant-based diet, you don't need bone broth, you don't need whey, you don't even need a lot of supplements. I mean, forget right. it. Exactly. That's, that's nature. Yeah. That's nature's formula. Yeah. And it works. I agree. What we're discovering about nutrition, which incidentally as a science is not taught in medical schools. Right. So it's not part of the medical practice system. What we're learning about nutrition, the whole food, plant-based, it has a very broad effect. What that means is it treats all kinds of illnesses we might get or we have, and it's a good for treatment too. If you already have it, eat that, and you can reverse a lot of these things. Anyhow, the nutrition thing is very broad. Compared to the alternative is taking a single chemical. We call them drugs. Yeah. If you, take, if you use drugs to maintain health, that's not going to work because you get side effects and they don't work anyhow very well. And if you keep on eating a bad thing, you're going to take drugs to patch yeah, up yeah. your problems a little bit. Yeah, in the short run, you might see something. But in the long run, no. But I, always, yeah. I don't take any drugs. We yeah. don't. I'm 83. I don't take a drug. It's just a chemical that has a reaction in your body that hides a symptom. So the doctor's basically right, giving you a, a prescription to hide a symptom. But I always say, well, 
why don't you stop doing what's causing the problem in the first place? That's right. But people don't want to do that. They say, no, I want to keep eating my pizza and my beef and my milk and my cheese, but uh, just give me a, a, something to hide the, the symptoms that are coming from that. It, right. It's ridiculous. And if you eat the right, the really, really healthy stuff, your body's going to heal itself right. quickly and naturally. Nutrition trumps genes. A lot of people want right. to make make out that you know we get this genetic. There's yeah. nothing I can do about family. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, we we all have some bad genes. We have some genes we'd rather not have. Right. But if you eat the right food, keep them under control. Yeah. Because yeah. the genes don't get expressed. You know, the big thing now is the paleo diet and, and uh, just be a caveman and eat meat. That's a ruse. You know, the paleo diet, the low carb diet, they're all the same, just yeah. different names. Atkins. And really, what they're doing. They're promoting, they're, they're claiming that carbohydrates is the problem. That's crazy. Carbohydrates are only produced in plants. So in a way, what they're doing, they're using this argument. Well, avoid carbohydrates. Well, then you have to eat more protein and fat, you know, those kind of foods. That's really that, what the real motive is, to protect the consumption of animal foods. Mm -hmm. So they make this story up. I mean, sure, some certain kinds of sugars, the simple ones like sugar, right. white flour, you know, right. that's, that's, if they went that far, okay, we can agree. Yeah, right. But that's not what the issue is. Right. You know, it's, you eat the to all the food, you don't worry about that. What do you say to these people that say, well, I have a certain body type or blood type or... Ah. I, I got that book on the blood type thing, and in, in the beginning, I, I thought, well, maybe he has something there. I started reading it. I remember I got to page 35. I couldn't stand it because his understanding of science was zilch. <laughs> so I gave it to one of my postdocs to read it. I said, take a look at this when it came out. He also got back to that far, too. He says, I don't want to read that book. I mean, you know, he's, he's basically, it's, in, in many ways, it's kind of fake science. I actually have a blood type where I'm supposed to eat meat. Me too. Yeah, and I, I know people that haven't eaten, that have the same blood type, and they haven't eaten meat in 30 years, and they're better off than people that do eat meat. That's right. I, I'm supposed to eat eating meat. Yeah. Um, I'm 83, and I don't take a drug. You're so. 83. That's, that's amazing. You look you're amazing for your age. So it was the 70s and 80s, and that was China, which means back then, they were not really in to junk food like we were. No, they were still more primitive. They were having more more closer to nature foods. In rural so, China especially. Right, because here are people, the reason they get cancer is because they eat Twinkies and, and donuts and pizza. But over there, they were still eating more uh, natural, more closer to nature. So really, it wasn't the modern refined foods that was killing. It was eating animals and animal products is was killing hundreds of millions of people. Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, you know, it is. We don't need to do that, obviously. We just should eat the whole plant-based foods. We shouldn't, not only should we, we should try to avoid animal foods, we should try to also avoid the, what I call, processed foods. Right. Convenience food. Exactly. Even if they're made out of plant parts. Right. Because I'm talking about donuts and... Exactly, exactly. You know, made all plants, but still, that's the wrong... Right. That's the wrong formula. This is revolutionary stuff. And it's so important people need to know this. The, really, the only diet really works in totality. You know, that involves all of our health problems, if you will. And it works at all ages. That's important to know, too. And it works across different societies. Eating a whole food, plant-based diet will give you the best health for the most number of years. Period. Thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. You're really helping the world. It's a miracle you were able to get it through the system and get it out there. That's going to happen. We got it is you know it's also important to the environment. I should say. Yeah, the truth always comes out. You can't hide it. It will always come out somehow. And things have to balance. So thank you again. Thank you. The book is the China study, the most comprehensive study of nutrition ever conducted. Other doctors like Dean Ornish say it's one of the most important books about nutrition ever written. Dr. Campbell runs the Center for Nutrition Studies at Mr. Cornell University. It's an online course that anyone can take to learn more about diet, nutrition, and lifestyle that's backed by science. Finally, the truth is coming out.